process. Anybody familiar with the way I teach or coach at, at this point probably knows that I'm not entirely in the technical camp as far as getting a player to perform at their best, and, and so I shouldn't be, no one should be. But I'd like to divide things into three different buckets. So we have our technical bucket, and you have to do your work there, you have to take care of it. But we have skill and we have performance. Now this video, or this series of videos, is going to focus on skill. Okay, now we could discuss the definition of skill, yeah, I think if you look in different places, speak to different people, you get different answers. But for me, skill is really an awareness and the ability to respond to that awareness in a positive way. So I mean knowing, I mean knowing where my club head is in space at any point in time, being able to respond to it being out of position, maybe able to respond to it and change the loft, change the face direction, change the attack angle just at the right point in time for me to get good contact. So skill for me is my awareness of where the golf club is, how it's moving, and my ability to respond positively to it. Now, what does that mean for you? Now, we could start to just segment things away a little bit and say, right, number one skill that you need to take care of is control of low point. And I'm not talking horizontal forward and back, I'm talking vertical low point. I'm pretty certain, again, if you're familiar with me at all, you've heard me speak about it or allude to it in one way or another. So controlling vertical low point for me is massive. Now there is a technical aspect from that bucket over here to control that, all right? But just producing the goods and making sure you move in a way that's good enough isn't always gonna get the job done. This is such a game of microscopic error and knowing that you can't repeat the same motion perfectly ever again in your entire life, there's always gonna be infinitesimal differences means there has to be something to glue it together to override that variability to still give you a predictable outcome. And that's where the skill comes in. Okay, so technique can take control of low point or take care of low point to a degree, but it's not always gonna get it done. Now you could be technically average or even weak. And if you are highly skilled by the definition I just gave you, you could still hit great, great golf shots, both around the green and off the tee, approach shots, whatever it is. Okay, so we're going to be aiming here to identify the skills that pertain to chipping in the short game. Okay, we'll start with low point. And my jumping off point for low point is always going to be the tee drill. One of the most simple drills in the world, right next to the coin drill. So the tee drill, all you do is pop the tee in the ground. And we just really want a very small amount of tee showing up above the turf. So we're talking this two three millimeters of tea now i'd set one here on the tee then i set another ball next to it on a very very similar lie which is going to be the ball that i get to play once i've satisfied the demands of the tea drill now the tea drill what we're looking to do is try and take the ball take the tea and not touch a single blade of grass so i'm gonna to have to bottom out my swing a couple of millimeters below the golf ball at the most it'll feel slightly clean but when you get it, you'll know you've got it. So let's give it a go. Ball and tee, no ground. So that was just ball. So I actually left the tee in the ground. I've taken it just a touch too clean. When that happens, you may just need to pull the tee back up a little bit because you will push it down slightly. Let's give it another go. Ball and tee, no ground. There it is. Okay, took the ball, saw the tee pop up. Now, I've just performed and demonstrated at bottom low point, two, three millimeters below the golf ball. So once I've done that, I step in and I'll try and repeat that same low point. I'm now gonna be two or three millimeters into the grass. Two or three millimeters into the grass. Contact feels very low on the face, but if you can master or start to control that low point height with a drill as simple as this, you'll be well on your way and you won't be relying so much on perfection in the te technical aspect. Right, so controlling low point, massive. T drill, great start to it. Second one, controlling loft. Okay, so I'm gonna try and encourage you to make the same delivery, or feels like the same delivery, with different amounts of loft. Now I could be delivering a lower loft, neutral, a higher loft, but I'm gonna try and do it all from the same kind of backswing positioning. Okay, my ability to do that relies on my ability to twist and move the club in space and present the loft we're looking for. So we'll do a, a slightly lower loft, kind of mid and high as well. Same backswing, see a little bit driven. You'll see the follow through changes slightly. 
We'll go up a little bit on this one. It's always nice to kind of bounce around instead of working way up the ladder. Same backswing. Added loft, saw it pop up a little bit. Again, same setup, same backswing, neutral. Comes out right in the middle. So three distinctly different launches, all from the same backswing, relying entirely on how I twisted and moved the club head and face to deliver the loft I was looking for. Now, touch is definitely a skill. Touch is definitely a skill. We're not born with it, we develop it. Now, the thing is with short game and touch is that it's very reliant on me making sure that I, A, strike it consistently well enough, and B, I launch it at the same kind of angle. Now, when we're talking about putting touch, yeah, launch can be a little bit off, but typically a ball is rolling within a few feet. All right, so you can be quite a poor striker of a putter relatively, and you can still work on touch and have no problem. Now, chipping, if you have an issue with strike, you probably shouldn't be working on touch. It's, it's gonna be, it's not a waste of time altogether, I shouldn't say that, but it's not the lowest hanging fruit. Now, if you can't control flight, you could put the same sp uh, swing speed on a shot, ball's gonna come off slower, it's gonna go as far. If you get it lower than you intend, it's gonna come off hotter, it's gonna go too far. That's not a touch error. That's not a touch error. That is a club delivery and a loft error. Okay, so I'd say only really work on the skill of touch when you're at a point you feel like your contact is relatively consistent and it will come and go, unfortunately. And also when your flight is also consistent. Okay, that is the point in which you work on touch. Now, unfortunately, there's no kind of shortcut as far as touch goes. It requires practice and time. Now, variability is massive. Okay, variability around a single distance is very useful. So if you were to pop out a, a tee on the green, try and land it by, trying to work a bit long, a little bit short, great. Ladder drills, again, great idea. Just having the ball incrementally carrying further and further. Now I'll say carry because it's a bit more reliable than roll out. Now if you have a very uniform green, it's very consistent, fantastic, good for you. You can kind of use roll out, but balls do tend to get in the way. So as far as touch goes, I'd be trying to land balls consistently further or consistently shorter. Giving yourself a space from A to B, let's say 20, 30 feet. First ball has to land in and try and see how many balls you can hit before you get to the end of the box. Okay, tried and tested stuff, proven, used for years in putting, but why not chipping? Okay, so developing touch relies on strike and flight first and foremost. And then same old school practice games that require variability versus repetition.